Hello everyone, I have already uploaded the treatment part in this YouTube channel but some of the things are still not covered related to the shock. So today you will learn about the stages of shock, in brief about the clinical features and what changes occur in the body during the early compensated shock. Monitoring part I will cover in the next video. So there are basically three stages of the shock. Whenever there is an initial insult, example if the patient is having diarrhea vomiting then patient will develop the dehydration then slowly patient will develop the hypovolemic shock. Or if the patient is having anaphylaxis then initial insult is anaphylaxis. It will trigger the shock and patient will develop the decreased perfusion and also the oxygen supply to the tissue will be decreased. It will lead to the compensated stage of the shock or we can say non-progressive stage. And we have to treat either in compensated or before this. Once the patient will go into the decompensated stage of the shock or progressive stage, then it is very tough to reverse the already damage occurred to the tissue because of the hypoxia and poor perfusion, it is really very tough to reverse it. Hardly in 20 to 30% patients, we can go back to the compensated and then to the normal condition. So we have to treat in this condition. We should make the target that we should be able to find out the compensated stage of the shock and we should treat it. And if decompensated shock will progress it will lead to the multiple system organ failure or we can say modes multiple organ dysfunction syndrome it is labeled as a refractory or resistant shock ultimately after modes hardly 10 to 20 percent patients will survive otherwise it will lead to the death so in the compensated shock or we can say non-progressive stage Patient will have the tachycardia, heart rate will be increased, tachypnea, respiratory rate will be increased, urine output will be reduced. Normal urine output in children is more than 1 ml per kg per hour. So if it is less than 1 ml, we label as a reduced urine output. Patient will be irritable, anxious. BP will remain normal during this stage. We should remember that BP will remain normal in compensated shock. So it will be fall in the later stage. Patient will have the poor pulse, prolonged capillary refill time, equal or more than 3 seconds cold peripheries. We label as a cold shock. If patient is having bounding pulse, flushed capillary refill time and warm periphery, we label as a warm shock. So also we have to keep in mind that not all the patient will have the poor pulse and cool periphery and CRT more than 3. In warm shock, patient will have the bounding pulse, warm periphery and flushed CRT. But because of tachycardia, tachypnea and the irritable child, we have to keep in mind maybe it is the early stage of the septic shock in the form of warm shock. Now in decompensated shock or we can say progressive stage with tachycardia, tachypnea, patient will develop the oliguria or anuria and the conscious level will be further deteriorated and patient will become drowsy, altered consciousness or sometimes patient may go into the stuprous and comatose. BP will fall during the decompensated shock. CRT will be more than 3 seconds and peripheries will be cool. Further, if patient will develop the modes, multiple system organ failure, multiple organ dysfunction syndrome, we label as a refractory or irreversible shock. In this condition, patient will develop the bradycardia, bradypnea or apnea. So heart rate, respiratory rate, both will fall. Anuria will be there. Patient will have the coma or seizures can occur during this stage. BP will be low to not recordable and CRT will be prolonged more than 6 seconds. So in early compensated shock, patient 
will have only tachycardia tachypnea this is the only first sign of the early stage of the compensated shock so we have to find out the patient during this stage so in the next video during the monitoring part i will tell you how much the normal heart rate according to the age and respiratory rate and in decompensated shock patient will develop the hypotension what the changes occur in the body during the compensatory stage of the shock multiple compensatory mechanisms try to maintain the blood pressure try to preserve the tissue perfusion in early stage of the compensated shock so heart rate will be increased stroke volume will be increased vascular smooth muscle tone will be increased it it is regulated through the neurohormonal changes in the sympathetic nervous system activation to preserve the blood flow to the vital organs to the heart brain respiratory rate is increased to promote the excretion of co2 to compensate for the increased co2 production and metabolic acidosis increased renal excretion of hydrogen ion occur then retention of bicarbonate in an efforts to maintain the normal ph maintenance of the vascular volume is facilitated by the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and also the atrial natriuretic factor axis cortisol and catecholamine synthesis also increase and also the secretion of adh despite all these changes intravascular fluid leak occur into the interstitial space because of the endothelial cell injury and loss of tight junction so these are the various mechanisms try to maintain the bp in early compensated stage of shock and this is the misconception that shock means hypotension while the hypotension low bp is a very late finding if you will treat the patient when the patient will develop the hypotension then you will hardly able to save the 30 to 40% of the life so always always start the treatment in the compensated stage of shock through the various compensatory mechanism hypotension is the late finding in the decompensated or progressive stage shock even can present with the normal bp patient will have the normal bp throughout the stages if the patient is having other factor we do not permit the patient to maintain the adequate tissue oxygen delivery example if the patient is having severe anemia hemoglobin is less than 7 g per dl we label as a severe anemia so if the patient is having severe anemia then patient can develop the this shock even hypoxia due to any reason example if the patient is having hypoxia due to some injuries or even we see in the newborn also they develop the hypoxic shock after severe birth asphyxia it result in the reduce oxygen delivery at any given cardiac output fever and trauma may increase the oxygen and metabolic requirement so whenever the patient of shock having the fever we should treat the fever also by giving the antipyretic because it will increase the tissue oxygen requirement whenever moderate or high grade of fever is present so this is in brief about the stages clinical features and uh, pathophysiology of the shock in next video i will tell you the monitoring part in the shock patients thank you so much